going to do a lot of integral calculus involving parametric equations. But one application of integral calculus does seem especially relevant for parametric equations, because parametric curves have initial points and terminal points. That is to say, if we've got a parametric curve, we start somewhere. And we end somewhere. And in that context, it's very natural to ask how far did we travel? In other words, What's the arc length? I don't think I want to spend the time deriving the arc length formula in detail. I'll just state it. The arc length is the interval, sorry, the integral from A to B where A is our initial time and B is our terminal time of the derivative of X with respect to T squared plus the derivative of Y with respect to T squared DT. And we do have a few requirements that this parametric equation has to satisfy if the arc length formula is to be valid. Let's go through these one by one. Our first requirement is fairly straightforward. This arc length formula has these derivatives in it. So these derivatives had better exist. And in fact, we need something slightly stronger than existence. We need them to be a continuous functions. The second requirement is a bit less obvious. The derivatives dx dt and dy dt can never be simultaneously zero. That requirement comes from the following. You have a parametric curve. As time passes, you move. And dx dt measures your horizontal velocity, and dy dt measures your vertical velocity. If this curve ever became a horizontal line segment, dy dt would be a zero, and that's fine. And if it ever became a vertical line segment, dx dt would be zero, and that's fine. If dy dt and dx dt are ever both zero, the object stops moving. It's not moving horizontally. It's not moving vertically. It just sits there forever. 
And that breaks the formula if it happens. We incidentally, looking a little into the future for, um, for those of you who are going to take differential equations with me, we really look heavily at what happens when both dy dt and dx dt are zero in differential equations. Our third requirement is that we do not retrace our path from A to B. So consider the sine of 2t equals x, the cosine of 2t equals y from 0 to 2 pi. When t equals zero, we're at the top of the unit circle, and we are traveling clockwise. Because of this two, when t equals pi, we've traveled entirely around the circle. And then between pi and two pi, we retrace that same path a second time. That is not allowed to happen if we're going to use this formula. As a final note, um, when we first saw the arc length formula at the very beginning of this class, we made the observation that we'll almost never be able to actually find the indefinite integrals that we get from the arc length formula. The same is still true here. You can set up the integral, but 99 times out of 100, you're going to need some kind of computer assistance to actually evaluate it.